Hello, good afternoon. I'm News 4's Kay Ingram, and joining, on, joining us excuse me, in studio today is Dr. Jacqueline Delmont. Dr. Jacqueline is the Chief Medical Officer for SOMOS, and she's here today to answer your questions. Now, we mentioned throughout the week, we have been taking your questions online at NBCNewYork.com just about the coronavirus, right? The, quote, the governor is live right now, um, and we've been seeing updates, and with those updates, you all had questions, and so today we're getting those answered. So, doctor, thank you so much for being here. Oh, my pleasure. And so, how has it been? Let's just start there. I mean, are you seeing your schedule get a lot busy, and if so, why? Well, predominantly it's because people want to understand. I think the media has, has bombarded with a lot of information, mm -hmm. but still sometimes it's just too sophisticated for them to understand. And, you know, it's almost where 2,500 independent doctors that are embedded in the community, we care for about a million Medicaid patients. And so they have a longstanding relationship with us and, and hearing it in the way that physicians speak to patients with yeah. making things simple mm -hmm. and giving them guidance um, has been, you know, part of our, a huge part of our responsibility. So, yeah, we're, we're getting phone calls, we're getting visits. Mm -hmm. Many of them are really upper respiratory infections that people always have, mm -hmm. but they want to make sure that they're, they're, they're not infected with the coronavirus. Nice. Well, with that in mind, we want to thank you again for, for being here and for you all for joining. And just a reminder, this is our live Q&A that we've been having all week, just taking your questions and getting them answered by the professionals. And so one of the questions we have from one of our viewers, so one of you all, is, is it safe to eat in restaurants? And what if a restaurant staff hasn't washed their hands properly? So two-part question. Is it safe? What if you don't see someone wash their hands? Well, like I said earlier, I'm not an alarmist. I think it is safe to, to eat at a restaurant and general precautions should be valid for even when we are not having an epidemic. So um, we wanna make sure that at the places that we're going that, we f that it's a trusted area, that it's a place that we know that they have the adequate hygiene. And you know, if it's somebody who is at higher risk, I would try to avoid um, places where they're in confined spaces and many people, but otherwise I would say it's safe to, to be to go to a restaurant, of course. Yeah. I was just out on Sixth Avenue and there was this uh, this one building right across from us and the restaurant, there were people there. I mean, the subways are a little cleared out, but the restaurant, I was like, oh, people are still, people are still dining. Yeah. Of course, well, the, the <laughs> life goes on. I so. was just about to say, life goes yes. on. And I'm glad you mentioned that too, about washing your hands. Cause you know that sign that's in the bathroom, it's like, employees must wash hands. Every time I see that, I'm like, y'all, everyone should be washing their hands, right? At all times. So not just when there's an outbreak. Absolutely. Nice. So next up, another question one of our viewers wanted to know is, is it possible to catch coronavirus two or three times? So we're hearing that, you know, for most people, uh, for some people, they might have it, they get it, they're on quarantine for a few days. Is it possible to get it again? No, it's actually a condition that happens once. I think the, 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 uh, uh, the community is a little concerned because since there are multiple coronavirus and we've had outbreaks, uh, prior to this in, in the last 20 years. So um, they may think that it's kind of the same disease, but this is that's why it's called novel. It's a new type of coronavirus. And once you have it and you survive it and you do well and get better, you're not gonna get it again. Nice, good yes. to know. So you get it once, you'll be fine, and then- You'll develop the immunity. And, and then of course, if you get exposed again, you won't have it, but then you can be contaminated with somebody that does have it and, and spread it throughout contact. Mm. So, you know, the general precautions persist even if the person has recovered from the disease. So they have to continue washing their hands and, and uh, you know, being sure that they're not exposing somebody that may be under risk. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice, thank you. All right, another, another question we have here is, can the coronavirus be found in the blood? Right, so in our bloodstreams. Yes, like in any infection, depending on the degree, we, we, we have, I think it's been said before that the coronavirus is, is um, um, received through, the, uh, through your nostrils, through the airways, mm -hmm. because that's where it, it ha develops most of the condition. But when you have the severe form, it does go into the bloodstream. And that's, you know, the people that get sicker, that develop the pneumonias, it comes into the bloodstream. And then the body tries to contain it and then it disappears. So um, now there's for sure testing and, and because uh, I, I know some people are concerned about the use of blood products, mm. but um, it, they're being tested now for that, that condition. I mean, it wasn't tested before because it wasn't a known, mm -hmm. a known disease or a known virus. Mm. Um, so uh, definitely goes into the blood, but in the most severe forms. And then once the person is better, it disappears from the blood. 
Nice. And I'm glad to hear whoever asked that question about the bloodstream because I feel like we've been hearing, you know, a lot about like, uh, you know, make sure you're washing your hands, you're using hand sanitizer, you're not touching your face. I don't know if y'all noticed this, but as you were giving that answer, I was like, hmm, and I'm like, darn it, I'm touching my face. So these little things that we're, we're needing to pay attention to, why don't you just do a quick reminder, what are some of those precautions? Yes, well, definitely washing your hands at least for 20 minutes, uh, 20 seconds, sorry, with enough uh, uh, water and soap. If you don't have access to to uh, wash your hands, then using one of these uh, uh, sanitizers that have at, le at least 60% of uh, alcohol. Um, it's not only doing it once, it's actually doing it, I would say, in every transition, when you're leaving a place, when you've uh, come back home, when you when you get to work, when you've been on the subway, any type of public transportation, or even, even taxi or Uber. Um, right. It's very important to wash your hands often. And always, if you're going to be in contact with a, with a relative, mm -hmm. with, with a baby, with your family, um, as soon as you get home, wash your hands again. And so multiple times. Nice. So on the hand sanitizer uh, aspect, you know, I'm curious, your recommendation, I understand it's about how much percentage of alcohol? 60%. So 60%. Yes. Uh, you know, I've noticed some of my friends, right? There's like the Bath and Body Works of the world where you have like the scented uh, uh, hand sanitizer. Does that matter? Like or is any hand sanitizer? It doesn't, it doesn't need to be scented, it just needs to have that concentration because it's what kills the virus. Um, so, so that definitely, I know that there's a shortage, so there's been recommendation to use gloves, mm -hmm. and especially if you're going to uh, hold on to any type of handles or doors. Um, I think that a glove is an alternative, but I've seen people keep the gloves on mm -hmm. and then touch their face, so as you touch a, con a surface that you're concerned of it being contaminated, you should actually peel the gloves off mm -hmm. cautiously throw it in the garbage and then wash your hands Got it. when you get to a place where you can. Awesome. All right, so you all hear that, right? If you want your limoncella hand sanitizer, so long as it's hand sanitizer and it has the right amount of alcohol, you should be good. All right, so next up, someone wants to know, or, or someone asked, one of our viewers, my child has asthma, doctor. Are they at higher risk for coronavirus complications? Yes, because a asthma is a condition of the lungs and coronavirus the COVID-19 affects the, the lungs. It gives upper respira respiratory infections. Many times the asthma, uh, the tr one of the triggers of asthma is actually having an upper re respiratory infection that makes mm -hmm. your asthma worse. So I think, you know, because it's a chronic condition and people get fatigued from using their inhalers, um, especially if the, the type of people that have asthma very often during the year and in the cold weather, that's another trigger, mm -hmm. that they should be using their inhaler and their preventative medications on a, on a daily basis. Um, because we know people get tired and they stop using their medication, so they should stock up on it, okay. have enough refills, and, and then use it uh, as it's been ordered by their physician, um, and then make sure that if they have any symptoms that they should definitely reach out to their doctors as soon as possible. Nice. So stocking up on some of the things like, uh, like albuterol, yes. things like that. Okay. Yes, and if there are any type of, of inhaler that, that is a preventive inhaler, some of them have steroids, um, that they should be using those as the doctor indicated. Another thing that's important, some very, very severe asthmatics use um, oral steroids, and mm -hmm. that de decreases their immunity. So that really makes somebody at even higher risk because your response to any type of infection is going to be decreased because of the fact of being on, on steroids like prednisone, for example. Right, right, interesting. All right, so next up, someone asks, why do we not have easy access to COVID-19 tests? I mean, where are we with that? Where are we with that, and why don't we? Right. So the issue is that it, it was centralized through the CDC mm -hmm. and and through the different uh, public uh, gov government uh, organizations. I mean, now it's actually been FDA approved for several of the labs that are at the doctor's office. Right. But like anything new. Um, the operational piece of I was just uh, speaking to somebody, you know, where do who, where do you drop off the sample? Sometimes patients are getting other type of blood tests on mm. top of the swab. So, you know, that you have to inform the doctor doctor's offices that the swab has to be uh, packaged and ordered separately. Mm. That you can't split the order if you want to test for several con several diseases. And then on top of that, we wanted to make sure that the samples could be picked up at the doctor's office and that the orders were available in the electronic medical record. Because, you know, I'm a little older. I used to be from the time where you would write these orders by hand, which you still can, mm -hmm. but most of the doctors are using electronic uh, health records. And if the order isn't available, it makes it a little more cumbersome even to track 
because with the system technology it allows you to know how many samples you sent follow up on those patients see how they're doing so all of these things needed to be kind of tied in and do a full 360 in order for them to go out and make sure that it, they could be tested at the doctor's offices I think that's going to make a big uh, improvement in access to testing nice. so it looks like one of our viewers did a little bit of research says I want to be tested and I heard it's easy to get tested in Australia so what's that about? That's actually my first time hearing that. Uh, I, I think it was because on? Tom Hanks was on TV saying ah. that he had it and his wife had it and that, right. and that he was tested. And so um, in a way, I understand their message because there are other countries where testing has been not only to symptomatic patients or patients at risk, but also to anybody that wanted to be tested to, uh, to be able to contain the condition. And I think that we're moving in that direction. It's just that the, the capacity was not there. Mm -hmm. There was a limited amount of testing that could be done. But now as, as commercial uh, organizations have been allowed mm -hmm. and approved to, to perform the test, it, it had to be done responsibly because we didn't want people testing when the test wasn't reliable. But mm -hmm. now that we know they have reliable testing, I'm sure that slowly but surely it'll get to or hopefully very quickly we'll get to to um, all the offices and and close to each of the patients environment so that they can be tested appropriately nice so dr jacqueline delmont i want to get to you know anything else that you see going on or maybe a question we haven't heard uh looks like right now we're live with cuomo he's talking about uh schools and you know them being closed broadway and banning uh large gatherings any other advice um, or things that you're seeing perhaps at your own practice that people should be aware of? Or no, I, I, I think it's definitely reiterating that um, there's a little bit of uh, the, the if people should identify if in their immediate um, uh, world and either at work or at home, if there's somebody that is at higher risk because mm -hmm. we're concentrating a little bit about on, on, you know, would I die from coronavirus, which I don't think so. Um, but it's also about me carrying the condition and bringing it to home to my 90 year old mom right. who doesn't have the same response ca capability. So we've done this very well with the flu. And of course there's a vaccine and, and there's encouraging uh, uh, encouragement to vaccinate contacts and home health aides. So educating the people that come to the homes and the family to not be out there if it's not necessary. Right. Um, and, and you know making sure that they understand all the precautions and the symptoms so that they, they um, call and uh, their pr physician earlier right. when these symptoms appear. So making sure to stay educated, and I say we've been doing a pretty good job at keeping you all informed, even on our website, right? You'll find plenty of articles uh, just about from anything for what are the things I should be grocery shopping for if I end up being self-quarantined, um, or just the updates that we've just been seeing all this week. So you can get more of that, again, at NBCNewYork.com. If you're on the go, you can download our app. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. I know My your pleasure. schedule is busy, but we really appreciate it, and I appreciate you all for joining as well in your questions. All right, have a good one.